Okay, the second time trying to do this video of Isaiah chapter 6. First video, who knows what happened. Chapter 6 relates to the book of Joshua. 66 books in Isaiah, chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died. Now, Uzziah, I feel a sneeze coming, so. <laughs> Uzziah is, a, is the king that got leprosy. Went into the holy place, offered up incense, which he wasn't supposed to do, and got the got the leprosy on his forehead. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. And Jesus said, no man can see God anytime. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And we're gonna we'll read, we'll keep on figuring it out, but we'll keep going. Sitting on upon his throne, high and lifted up. Now think about it. In heaven, all the angels, the seraphims, the cherubims, God is on his throne, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And before the fall of Lucifer, here is a throne that is high and lifted up. And the Bible tells us that Lucifer had a throne or a dominion above that which is God as a music director, as a music leader of all heaven. What a mighty scene that would have been before the, the fall of Lucifer. And now that Lucifer has fallen, and Isaiah tells us he sees the God's throne high and lifted up and nothing else but God's throne. To all the angels in being. His train. That's to draw along. That's what a train does. It draws along the cars. And there was a queen of Sheba that came to Solomon with a, tr with a mighty train. And this is the royal robe of God in the temple, filled the temple. The being of God fills the temple. Above it, the throne, the cherubims. Now there are cherubims and there are seraphims. The only time this occurs is Chapter 6, verse 2, and chapter 6, verse 6, and they're not to be mistaken with the cherubims. And above the throne of God is the seraphims. Each one, and they're plural, S, each one had six wings. With twain two covered his face. With twain two covered his feet. And with twain two he did fly. And one cried unto another, the seraphim, and said, Holy, 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 as the Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Now, Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. We read about the cherubims. There's cherubims and there's seraphims. And in verse 6 it says, Before the throne was a sea of glass like in a crystal, and in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. In the midst of the throne are the cherubims, and above the throne is seraphims. Now the cherubims in 4 8 of Revelation, the four beasts which each had six wings like the seraphims about him were full of eyes within they rest not day and night saying holy 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 seraphims lord god almighty which was and is and is to come as the cherub as, as the cherubims holy 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 the seraphims holy 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 each one has their different phrases that are just continually Praising God the Father. 
And the post of the door moved at the voice of him, God's voice, that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Now notice it said temple in verse 1 and house in verse 4. And there's an error where people have made their church heaven. We go to God's house. You got to go to God's house on Sunday. We even name our church temple. Listen, you're foolish to think that God dwells in your church building. God does not dwell in any building made of made of hands of man. The Bible says God does not dwell in your building. Paul tells us that God dwells in the heart of the believer. The heart of the believer. The believer is the church, not the building. And so there are many errors that are believed amongst religions in the Baptist that their church is the house of God. And God sits. Come on, really? And when you put a sign outside your church, all are welcome. You mean lost people are in a place where God is? Dwelling? The place? Not the believer. The place? You telling me there are lost people in heaven today? No, there's not. So when you make your church house building, heaven and God dwells in your church house and all are welcome you are teaching that everybody goes everybody that comes to my church is in heaven and before God that's a heresy that's a false teaching and there's been church history where there's been no building underground churches out in fields Preacher Whitefield gone through New England would meet in the fields, stand up on a tree stump, stand up on a rock in the factories, preaching the Holy Spirit of God to lost people and saved people without a building. And it was filled with smoke. What are you going to do with that one? I mean, the modern churches today have smoke machines. And if that temple and that building is the place of God, then they got a Bible reference to their smoking machines. But the building is not where God dwells. The building is not God's house. The individual believer that has the Holy Spirit indwelling in his heart through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and by faith and, and merit of Jesus alone, God dwells in us, not the building, but the body of the believers. So there's great error when you try to make your church building the presence of God. God there when the doors are closed? So you can't make that distinct that you're building. And then the Old Testament is when God dwelt in a particular building. The tabernacle, the temple. And when you, we're not under law, we're under grace, we're not under the Old Testament. But when you try to put God in a building, you try to put God in a box, an oracle, you are now taking your congregation and putting them back under the Old Testament. And that's a lie and a heresy. God dwells in the, in the heart of the believer. Then said I, Isaiah, Woe is, oh, by the way, too, smoke. Verse 4, yeah, I've been guilty. We find little pit, cute pictures and sayings we put on Facebook and all that. You know, smoking or non-smoking. You know, referencing heaven or hell. Isaiah tells us there's smoke. The house is filled with smoke. There is smoke, incense, burning. And you find that in the book of Revelation with John the Apostle. So we can't say smoking or non-smoking. I've been guilty and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Then said I, Isaiah, woe is me, for I am undone. 
All right, so Isaiah is in the presence of God. He's in the house of God. He's in the temple. You tell me that when you in your church building when a lost man comes into your church building, when a saved man comes into your church building, when he enters into the presence of your church building, he gets convicted of his sins. There's been no preaching. There's been no altar calls. There has been no, uh, you know, him, no just as I am. Isaiah is standing in the holy presence of God and it brings conviction. I've sat in many churches, many times. All the churches I've been in. And there have been times, I didn't get no conviction of nothing. I've gone in, sat down, heard the message, gone home, boom. When you get in the presence of a holy and righteous God, you're going to be, I'm a sinner, I'm unclean. That's Isaiah. I am done because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people, Judah, Jerusalem, of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. The king. Verse 1, he says, I've seen the Lord. Verse 3, holy, holy is the Lord. That's quite interesting. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke 5, 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Simon Peter and Isaiah get the very first reaction, the same thing. I am a sinner in the presence of God. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, king, king. Luke chapter, and Luke, Luke 23, 38. And the subscription which was written over him, Jesus, and the letters in Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Nowhere is Jesus spoken about king of the church. Nowhere. He's the bridegroom of the church. He's never king. He'll be the king of the kings and will be king. So when Isaiah says in chapter 6, I saw the Lord, they're saying, holy, holy Lord, I've seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah puts to the fact that Jehovah witnesses are wrong. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And when Isaiah saw God, he saw the pre-incarnate of Jesus Christ. And what the Lord here is Adonai, Adonai. This is the earthly king Jehovah. That's Jesus Christ. No other. No other. So Jesus Christ, before he is born, is seen by Isaiah to be God and God to be Jesus Christ in the temple at the throne with the cherubims and the cherubim proclaiming God. I'll go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 again.
After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, as it were, a trumpet speaking with me, talking with me. He said, Come up hither. There's a rapture. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Immediately I was in the spirit, rapture. And behold, a throne, Isaiah, was in heaven, Isaiah, and one that sat on the throne. Now we'll see the Trinity in a moment. And he that sat was the look upon like Jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. There's the rainbow. Genesis says a bowl, not rainbow. About the throne, God's throne, a sight like unto emerald, a green rainbow. So don't worry about the sodomite stealing the rainbow. I've seen their rainbow. It's not green. God's rainbow is green. Got to study the scriptures. Round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty-four elders clothed in white raiment. They had on their heads crowns of gold. This is all around the throne. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders, which I'll enjoy, and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. And then verses 6, 7, 8 are the beasts. 9 and 10 are the beasts. Verse 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things. For Thy pleasure are they created. In chapter 5, verse 5, and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion, capital L, of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, Luke chapter 1. That's the Lamb of God. When Isaiah is talking about in chapter 6, he sees Jesus Christ. He sees God. And the Jehovah Witnesses are totally, absolutely wrong on their stand that Jesus is not God. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which was taken off the tongues of the altar. So, Harrison Ford, where is the Ark of the Covenant? No, the Nazis don't have it. The Apostle John, the beloved disciple, tells us that the all, uh, that the Ark of the Covenant is in heaven. And then when God spoke to Moses, he said, Moses, the pattern that thou seest in the mount, that Moses saw heaven. Listen, that tabernacle speaks more in the Old Testament, the designs and the features and the measurement, more than the birth. Any birth. Because there's no birth in heaven. But there's a tabernacle in heaven. There's a temple in heaven. And there's a temple given to the nation of Israel. And the church tries to copy it with their buildings. And I would believe that this is off the brazen altar. Though the incense altar had coals. He laid it upon my mouth. Ouch. A live hot coal is placed on the mouth of Isaiah. It said, <coughs> it said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. Thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. Now I am washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament saints were cleansed. By the blood of bulls and goats. And lambs. And sheep. And died and went to Abraham's bosom. Waiting to the day that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. And was buried. And arose again the third day. Isaiah is purged of his sins. He is cleansed of his iniquity. 
by a live coal off the altar. That didn't happen in the law. No one walked up to that brazen altar and grabbed their coal and put it in their mouth. But Isaiah. No one's seen the seraphims ever. But God and all those that are in heaven and Isaiah. John and Ezekiel will tell us about the cherubims. I mean the cherubims, excuse me. I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? See the Trinity? Us. That's God the Father, God the Son before he's born, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us make man in our homage. That's the Trinity. Then Isaiah says, Then send I. Here I am. Send me. And I. That's my commission too. When I, I got a note here. Send me, Lord, with the help me. I'll go, Lord, I, like a wife. I want to go, Lord. I want to tell the people. I want to preach. I want to witness. I want to be your instrument. And he said, God said, go. All right, that sounds familiar. Jesus said, go. And he said, go. And tell this people. Isaiah go tell the Jews. The Hebrews. Now a Christian is told. Go in all to the world. Jews and Gentiles. Isaiah is told. Go to the people. His people. The Jews. Don't go the way of the Gentiles. As Matthew speaks. Tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, see ye indeed, but perceive not. That's not the message of the Christian. The Christian is going all the world and preach the gospel. Isaiah's message is, tell them, you're going to hear, you're not going to understand. You're going to see, but you're not going to perceive. There's no gospel message. There's no... Isaiah looking forward to Calvary. That's not his message. That's the Christian message, the gospel. Isaiah is not preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The Christians are told to. I oh, know the great commission of Matthew. Get out of Matthew. Make the heart of this people, Jews, fat cholesterol make their ears heavy and shut down their eyes least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and convert that's the first time convert shows up in the bible and be healed Isaiah, your message is you're going to hear, but you're not going to listen. You're going to see, you're not going to get it. And your heart will be uncircumcised. Acts 28. Acts 28. Acts 28, 25. When they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well, spake the Holy Ghost, inspiration by Elias the prophet, unto your father. Saying, go ye to this people. Here we go. Saying, hear ye shall hear, and shall not understand. Seeing ye shall see, and not precede. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. At least they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted. That's what we just read. I should heal them. Our message is hope. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 
for the death, burial, resurrection according to the scriptures. Isaiah's message is, you're not going to hear it. You're not going to listen. You're not going to see. You're not going to be converted. That's the message of Isaiah. There's no Calvary. Then said I, Isaiah, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, Jeremiah, and the houses be without men. Israel's already gone. And the land be utterly desolate, Jeremiah, Titus, tribulation. Stiley, how long do you preach the gospel? Until I am absent from the body and present with the Lord or raptured. And even still, Paul is getting rewards and fruits by people that use properly the Romans road. The people properly use his epistles to witness the people, the gospel, and people get saved. Keep going to you. You're in heaven yourself. Isaiah, you keep going until there's nobody in the land. There's no hope. Destruction. Christian, there is a blessed hope and a glorious period of our great God and Savior for all those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that they can be saved. And the Lord has removed men far away. There'll be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. The land, the land, the land is Israel. The land that God promised the Jews. Not America, not the church house, but the land of Palestine, the land of Cana, that God said, I'll give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it shall be a tenth. There's your tithe. And it shall return and shall be eaten. Cannibalism. Literally eating. You find it in the book of Lamentations. And you find it, uh, a woman came to, to King Solomon and said, you know, we've taken our child, we boiled him, and we ate him. And this mother, she's taken her child and hid the child. And the commentators say, you know, uh, it engulfed around it. Yeah, that can be. But eating, God knows what eating means. Look at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Notice I'm using scriptures. I ain't giving you no opinion. Revelation 12. And there appear a great woman in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, not Mary. That's the nation of Israel according to the dream of Joseph and the interpretation of Jacob. Upon her head the crown with 12 stars. She being with child, a Jewish child, if she's Israel. She is Israel. She's got a Jewish child. Verse 3. There appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red China, uh, dragon, not of China, having seven heads. Watch out for that dragon space program America's having. The dragon. Oh, bear watch out for the dragon, my friend. Having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. All right. And his tail drew the third part of the stars in heaven, angels, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, Israel, which was ready to devour, I mean, was ready to deliver, to devour her child, a Jewish child. Satan's ready to eat a Jewish child, a Jewish son. Jesus is Jewish. He's not Gentile. He's not African. He's not Japheth. And there's one or two churches, the Protestants and the Catholics, that will tell you out of their catechisms, Luther's and a Catholic church, that it is the literal body of Jesus Christ at the Mass when they partake 
of the eating of the body and blood, literal cannibalism, at the Mass. And that happens as often as the Mass is taken part. They are eating, according to their traditions, a literal body of a Jewish man. And in my book, that's cannibalism. So don't tell me when we come over here to Isaiah that, you know, the tent that's eaten. The tent is eaten. They're eating. Pass the ketchup. I know scholars don't want to believe the Bible. As a teal tree. And you want to have fun with that one? And look at the scholarships of that one. The lemon, the pecan tree. and It's a teal tree. Now, what is a teal tree? The scholars are so, oh, we don't want to say I don't know. Stiley will say the teal tree is I don't know. Now, it is either a tree that has been extinct. You've heard the word extinct. You can believe that the dinosaurs are extinct, but the scholars can't believe that maybe the teal tree is extinct. Or maybe the teal tree is another name for a tree that we don't know. But this plain and simple, I don't know. Now, how hard is that? And I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor of, the of theology, Dr. Stanley William Hayward. And a teal tree, I don't know. I'm not ashamed to say I don't know. And as an oak, gotta watch out for those oaks in the Bible. Very much I would believe that Jesus Christ died on an oak cross rather than a dogwood. <laughs> Whose substance is in it, it is in them, their food, their nuts, their fruits. When they cast their leaves, death. A tree casts its leaves when it's dead. So the holy seed, Israel, shall be the substance of thereof of the food the diet that substance is also the part of the name of the host of the wafer interesting 